This episode of Techzilla is brought to you by The Ben Heck Show. Time to get AC Nation on. Standard definition. Sometimes it just sucks. True. Well, Sam writes in. Hi, Patrick and Robert. I'm a longtime viewer of HD Nation and Techzilla. I just attempted to watch the movie last night on DVD and was surprised at how low the quality of the video was. Mm. It was labeled standard definition on the disc, which was a bit surprising because DVDs usually are 1080p, so there's no need to label them SD. 480p. 480p. What did I say? 1080p? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm thinking uh, <laughs> wishful Blue thoughts, Ray. really. Hey, I'm wondering if this disc was deliberately downscaled so that there is a bigger gap in video quality between it and Blu-ray. It's hard for me. Uh, it's hard for me to accept that a movie shot in 2010 or even 29 could be shot in such low quality. Thanks for taking the time to read this. Signed, Sam. Well, it's it's really doubtful it was yeah. deliberately downscaled. Uh, if you've been lo watching lots of Blu-rays. You can be shocked at how crappy even a well transcoded DVD can look. Uh, it's it's really and, and and let me make that clear. DVDs look like ass compared to 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 tainted good transcoded 1080p Blu-rays. So especially when saying. they're blown up on a big screen TV mm -hmm. where you have lots of pixels. Yeah, where you know, DVDs about 350,000 pixels. There's a yeah, 1080p is how many? Over two million. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> a lot of space to fill with fewer pixels. DVDs are basically SD though. Heck, 480p is practically SD. Most DVDs are 60i on the disc, not actually 480p. And again, 480p, it's a lot smaller than a 1080p screen. 480p picture has to be expanded. Um, Upscaled. Second, by the way, we're going to assume you're talking about Last Night, the 2010 movie with Keira Knightley. And yeah, that should actually be a pretty good source. The Blu-ray video is supposed to look good. Um, you know, not, the 1999 straight to VHS movie, probably not so good of the same title. If somebody was asleep at the wheel and they mastered the DVD, or if your DVD player is having a tough time upscaling to 1080p, it can make, the, it can make things look ugly. Especially this film, a lot of, if memory serves, it's supposed to be a lot of indoor shots, a lot of night shots, a lot of dark wood club room kind of stuff, you know, your noise can be introduced, not intentionally, but just through bad upscaling. Um, Dark scenes can be difficult to compress mm -hmm. too, so that could be a reason for the troubles on the disc. Also, check the connections on the player. I'm assuming you're using an up-converting player right. with HDMI output to an HDTV and everything's set up correctly because... Uh, and that can DVDs. be a big assumption as we've yeah, seen. That can be. And DVDs, <laughs> DVDs shouldn't look that bad, but it's unfortunate they sometimes do. Yeah. Hey, Blu-ray Blu though should almost always look better. Darn well should. It's uh, five, six times as many pixels. Yes. You hope? You hope that helps? <laughs> hey, Vinny from Hawthorne writes in, first let me say I love the show. You guys and gal rock. Keep up the great work. I'm glad you demoed the new Roku 2, but you forgot to mention the new line of players, that the new line of players have a micro SD input for game storage. Uh, one thing that's not listed anywhere I can find is that uh, is what is the maximum sized micro SD card it will support. Can you let us know? And if one comes included with the XS top of the line unit, regards, Vinny from Hawthorne, New York. Vinny, that is an excellent catch. Uh, I didn't really get too excited about the micro SD card slot, which you can probably just, I don't know if you know if we can get Ooh. a tight enough shot on that. It's, it's basically it's, a little tiny shot right above the HDMI port. No micro SD card comes with the XS uh, or the HD or the XD, but the slot is there. It will support uh, 32 gigabyte SD cards, yes. uh, micro SD cards. Um, they just want it to be at least a class two card that has at least two gigabytes of storage, store, storage, storage. Storage. Basically, you need at least a two gigabyte card for the Roku to be happy. Once it's installed and formatted, you go through the menuing system to do that. Um, the Roku box is going to automatically populate it with extra channel and game info as you load in new channels and games. It's their way of, of getting around game storage. Um, and something that some heavy channel collectors ran into on early Rokus, which is literally running out of space in the memory on the Roku to store channel info and having to load it over again or delete channels to load more channels. The local storage on the micro SD card should be a lot faster. Uh, for games and for basically accessing your information. Because uh, it's, it's getting to the point where they've got like a plus, like over 300 main channels, private channels, uh, even large number of them. And then, of course, they're adding in gaming with the Angry Birds and such. And it's pretty basic. You just go into. Do, 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 do. Uh, oh, you know what? I don't have an SD card in there, so it's probably not detecting oh. it. Haha. <laughs> um, but the idea is that you know, basically, you you can't load content through the SD card. You're not moving your content on the SD, micro SD card. It's basically there to expand the onboard memory of the Roku, and it's taken care of automatically. Nice. Thirty-two gigabyte cards are supported. I like that it's an internal storage, and those cards are readily available, and they're yeah. not that much more expensive than standard SD cards. They're getting pretty cheap. It is. I used to put them in my old phone when I needed that kind of thing. <laughs> anyway. 
Hey, now it's time for the new Blu-ray releases for August 9th, 2011. First up, Paul. This 2011 film stars Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, but instead of their usual directing partner, they paired up with Greg Mottola, director of Superbad. This region-free release comes in a two-disc set, one Blu-ray and one DVD, with an MPEG-4 AVC codec, 235 to 1 aspect ratio, and a DTS-HD Master Audio 5.1 soundtrack. This release also includes an unrated extended cut, as well as an audio commentary, a 40-minute two-part making of documentary, eight behind-the-scenes featurettes totaling an hour, 11 minutes of bloopers, a 15-minute look at the CG behind the alien character of Paul, a two-minute look at the fictional sci-fi writer Adam Shadowchild, and a minute of Simon Pegg making funny faces. Next up, Your Highness. This film stars James Franco and Danny McBride as two princes who embark on a mission to pee to rescue Franco's bride-to-be and stumble upon Natalie Portman along the way. This release includes both the theatrical and unrated versions, but the difference is minimal, with the unrated version only three minutes longer than the theatrical. This region-free release comes with an MPEG-4 AVC codec, 240 to 1 aspect ratio, and a DTS-HD Master Audio 5.1 soundtrack. Extras include an audio commentary, 30-minute 30, 30 making of, 15 minutes of extended scenes, 10 minutes of alternate and deleted scenes, a five-minute gag reel, and 10 minutes of more outtakes divided into three small featurettes. Also released this week, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. This cult classic set the bar for team coming-of-age comedies. The film centers around the lives of students that attend the fictitious Ridgemont High. Although this disc was encoded in 1080p VC1 in its original aspect ratio, the video quality is merely satisfactory. Blu-ray.com noticed ample digital noise throughout the film, and while we know the movie wasn't shot on the highest quality of film, the print that was used borders on unacceptable, with noticeable film scratches near the movie's end. The audio, however, is blessed in comparison, the dialogue is clean and intelligible, and the music quality, while not stellar, is enjoyable. The extras include content from the special edition DVD, plus new HD content via the U-Control feature, like Scene Companion, with behind-the-scenes footage, bios, and interviews. Also included is the music of Fast Times at Ridgemont High, a fun little music tool that lets you identify the song playing on the screen, as well as create custom playlists and buy songs off iTunes. One last noteworthy release is Dazed and Confused, but since Criterion is planning their own release of the film in October, we'll wait until then for the details on that. And as always, check out our show notes at techzilla.com or hdnation.tv for the rest of this week's Blu-ray releases. And it's time to thank one of our sponsors, The Ben Heck Show. Join modding wizard Ben Heck and friends as they build and modify a host of amazing community-inspired creations. Be sure to watch new episodes of The Ben Heck Show every two weeks right here at revision3.com slash tbhs. In the latest episode of The Ben Heck Show, Ben demonstrates how he modifies a pair of Xbox controllers for people with various disabilities. Ben also receives a visit from pinball designer extraordinaire John Papa Duke, creator of legendary Midway and Bally pinball machines. Stay tuned to element14.com slash tbhs to find out how you can enter to win Ben's latest builds from his show.